This is the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, a large panel van that at the end of 2018 managed to knock the big Ford Transit off the top of the top 10 best-selling large vans list. And, well, it is enormous. Usually I can touch the top of these vans when I'm reviewing them, but there's no chance with a van this size. And while I'm here, I may as well show you some of the features on the outside. The big sliding door. Slides back very easily and locks in place, allowing you access to the gigantic load space. At the front of the vehicle, as you can see, it's had a bit of a facelift. No longer do we have those big chopping board sized lights. These ones have been nicely streamlined and these nice little tapered points at the end make it look like it's wearing a bit of eyeshadow. As you can see, the grille remains nice and functional, showing off those big three spokes. And it's still very practical at the front here, and Mercedes haven't lost that wonderful step. So, the big windscreen. If the weather turns and you do need to get any snow and ice off the front, hop up here and you can reach everything you need to. Very, very easy. As you can see, a great looking van. And here we are in the cabin. Now, we're gonna spend quite a bit of time in here because of course this is where you would spend most of your time too. First impressions, it's massive. Uh, I mean, it's exactly what you'd expect from a vehicle this size, but I can't quite get over how much room there is. If we look up, look at all this room up here, and if we look down into the footwells, look at all this space down here as well. There's so much leg room, I could be doing the river dance and no one would be any the wiser. It's nice, it's big, the dashboard is a lovely black durable plastic, just what you'd expect. And the steering wheel appears to be made of that same material as well, although a little bit more spongy. And it feels like if you're doing some tight cornering or tight manoeuvring, that the steering wheel would slip through your hands quite nicely. On the steering wheel, on the right hand side, there's your cruise control. And on the left hand side, there's all your volume controls for your phone and for the voice control that uh, interacts with this infotainment screen over here. Just while we're on the steering wheel, there's gorgeous little track pads which allow you to control the infotainment screen and a little cut down version of it on your dashboard here. The control on the left hand side controls this screen, so it scrolls left and it scrolls right. Same on the other side, except on the little cut down version on your dashboard here, which means you can control all of the vehicle's settings from wherever you want to. You can use your hands if you want over here, you can use your hands if you want over here. You've also got very nice bright displays in the dashboard down here, very simple. You've got your usual sort of miles per gallon, mileometer down in the center, and then either side you've got a rev counter and you've got your speedometer as well. And it's all very clear, it's all very bright. And in a dark black plastic, uh, a cabin like this, having nice bright displays, they really stand out, so you're not going to miss any of that information. If we move across, here's this nice big infotainment screen. This is filled with everything. All sorts of stuff can be done from here, from your streaming from your phone that you can connect up with Bluetooth, vehicle information, there's an app store, there's even a full version of the uh, user manual stored right in here. Um, it's incredibly clever. If you want to find out all sorts of stuff about what's actually on this. We've done another video, the link to which is up here or down in the blurb below the video. Just quickly on that, as I said, there's a full user manual on there, which means you don't need to carry around a paper one, but you've been given one anyway. It's been stashed up here in this storage bin. Here it is. I mean, it's nice to have one as well, and I guess you do need somewhere for your service stamps to go. Just pop that back. On the center console as well, you've got these lovely vents. I absolutely love the design. You could have just had simple squares, but Mercedes decided to go for these nice round beveled vents that are really nice, really smooth action on them. Very easy to shut, very easy to open. And uh, you can control again everything from down here. There's all the air conditioning controls. I'd just like to point out, one of my favorite bits about this uh, dashboard is this little rocker switch here. So they've used it for the volume control They've used it for the fan speed control and they've used it for the temperature control. And it's so easy to use with just your thumb. If you're driving along and you want to flick the volume up and, I don't know, for some reason you don't want to use the rocker switch that's on the steering wheel, you can just reach out. It flips up and down very easily. It's a very cool little switch and actually kind of adds a little bit of class to the proceedings. Cubby holes and cup holders. Well, 
that's a game of two halves. I like these little cubby holes here. There's two of them, one either side. Uh, I've stored the keyless fob just on this side over here, and as, as that kind of pertains, this is a, a keyless stop start and keyless entry model. These particular cubby holes though, they're nice and rubberized and they feel really, really deep. I actually have to put my hand in quite a way before I meet some resistance. It feels like I'm on I'm a Celebrity and I'm on some sort of bush tucker trial, but there's no creepy crawlies in there, thankfully. If you stick your change in there, it's not gonna go anywhere. Very, very nice. It's good storage as well. The passenger over this side has got a nice big storage bin in front of them. And there's loads of storage over the other side of the dashboard. In fact, there's three big compartments two cup holders on that side as well, two cup holders here, and cup holders in the middle. And just on those cup holders, I'm not entirely sure what the people over at Mercedes have been drinking and how big their coffee cups are, but my sports cup just uh, uh, about fits in that cup holder there. And uh, there's no chance in the ones over here. They're, they're just far too small, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Uh, uh, but while I'm down here, I would like to point out that the gear stick is in a really nice position. Now I've been in a lot of large vans recently and I've always noticed that the gear stick is kind of in the centre of the console. This one is actually a lot closer to the driver's knee. A lot of other vehicles tend to mount the gear stick in the centre of the console which means you do have to reach over and if there is someone sitting in the middle seat there might be a little bit of awkward knee fondling so I hope you know them quite well and if you don't you are going to get to know them quite well. Um, but this one is very nice in a very good position and there's even a groove cut out of the console here to allow the person sitting in the middle a little bit more leg room. Their other leg would go the other side of this console and of course if you're just sitting in the passenger seat you've got plenty of leg room anyway. If I progress over this dashboard, initially I thought this was a glove box, but it's not. Uh, there is actually no glove box. I think Mercedes probably thought there's enough overhead storage, there's enough storage in the doors, um, so we don't really need to put a glove box in, fair enough. Um, I, I can kind of see that thinking. But if I go on to one thing that did flummox me slightly, it's the choice to put USB-C connections everywhere. Now I was quite excited because I have a Samsung phone and Samsung phones make use of USB-C connections. So I got my adapter, very excitedly plugged my USB-C connection in one end and I thought to myself, hang on a moment, I, that's a bit too big. I'm not gonna be able to charge my phone up with that. And then I realized, ah, if I do actually want to charge my phone in here, I'm going to need a USB-C connection to USB-C connection, but I don't have one. Uh, so I'm going to have to use my 12 volt adapter, take out the cigar lighter, shove that in there. And I'm going to have to make do with that for the time being. It's an odd choice from Mercedes. I guess they're trying to future proof the vehicle for when everyone has USB-C connections. But for the time being, I'm going to stick with my 12 volt adapter. And if we look up, We've obviously already touched on the overhead storage up here, but there's loads of it. Just to illustrate, I shoved all my invoices up there and you're no doubt going to do the same. In the middle here, nice bright light. So if you are doing any work and you happen to find yourself out as the sun is going down, that light will take care of everything. And in the middle is a SOS switch. So if you do find yourself stuck or you've broken down, press that button. Trust me when I say that someone from Mercedes-Benz support will be on the phone in seconds. I know this for a fact because while we were filming, I accidentally pressed the button and had a very nice conversation with someone from Mercedes who was very understanding that I pressed it by accident. I just want to quickly touch on door storage. There's loads of it, more than enough room for a nice litre bottle of water. And up behind me on the bulkhead, there's two coat hooks. Anything you hang up there, it's not going anywhere. The two seats next to me, they're very comfortable. They're maybe not as comfortable as the driver's seat, but it's for your passengers. Two full-size seats and underneath them, whether it was designed for it or not, two big storage bins. So biscuit tin, laptops, anything else precious, no one's gonna find that unless they know that there's storage under there. And with that, let's head into the load space and have a look at that. Hi, yeah, Mum, you're going to have to stop calling me at work. All right, I love you too. And here we are at the money-making end. Now, as you can see, it's so big, I've decided to move my entire office in. And you'll be pleased to know that every single Mercedes-Benz Sprinter can carry an extra two tonnes of weight. So what does that equate to? 80 bags of cement? 
a thousand two litre bottles of water and if I am guessing their average weight right, four adult polar bears and their feeding tray. Now look, it's gigantic in here. It's lovely and ply lined. There's a very sturdy and durable compressed wood floor. You can probably notice the LED lighting that goes around all of the top of this particular load space and it just feels like it goes back and back. On the door you will have seen the internal handle, that means if you pop in through the side door you can get out through the back. It's not only incredibly useful, it's also a safety feature. And there's lashing points and various other bits and bobs that we go into in much more detail in this video right here. Just click on the link, there's another link down in the blurb underneath the video. But you're probably wondering how it handles the roads. Well, I took it out earlier today, here's how I got on. And here we are. First things first, I have to commend Mercedes for making this seat as comfortable to drive in as it is to sit in when it's standing still. And it's so high up, I have an almost commanding view of the road. And thanks to the massive great big windows, as you can see, I've got almost a 180 degree field of vision. It's absolutely fantastic. I just feel like I'm in control of the road. And as you can hear, probably, maybe not, that big Euro 6 diesel engine is not churning out too much sound. I was actually, I have to admit, pretty surprised. I thought an engine of that size was gonna make driving a bit of a noisy affair, but actually, it's very pleasant in here. Just touching back on visibility, uh, you're probably just able to catch a little shot of one of these wing mirrors off to the side here. They are absolutely huge as well, and they've got the little extender mirrors on the bottom, which means that your field of view is not compromised at all. If I had to level one criticism at the drive, it would probably be that the suspension is just a little bit spongy. Now, that's not to say it's uncomfortable, it's more that whenever I hit a bump in the road or I take a corner, it feels a bit like I'm on a bouncy castle. There's this kind of aftershock rocking. It's a very minimal complaint. And look, to be fair, if the load that I had in the back was a lot heavier, if I was carrying a full load, that kind of performance would probably tighten up a little bit. But it's worth saying, because if you are driving around without a load, you are probably gonna feel that certain element of bounciness. I am just having a lot of fun driving this van. It is big, but it is powerful. There's torque, there's response. Every time I change gear, I feel the engine pull me along the road. It is absolutely wonderful to feel so in control of such a large vehicle. It basically feels like a go-kart, and yet you know that you're this three and a half ton massive van chugging along down the road, but you wouldn't know it. I could, for all intents and purposes, be sitting in the front of one of Mercedes AMG line cars, and I wouldn't know the difference. So, overall, fun, tough, responsive. What more could you want from a large van? If you want to see more videos like this one, why not watch one of these? Click on our logo to subscribe to our channel, and if you're in the market for a brand new vehicle, why not head on over to vanorama.com.